are you, Nick? I'm, I'm very well. I, uh, yeah. I'm sorry to... I, I couldn't help but over here. You have a rash on your Alabama? Uh, well, well, that's yeah, that was off the air. We had a discussion about a medical condition Guillermo oh, was gosh. having. It's okay, though. He signed a release. We can get into it. But, yeah, Guillermo has a rash. But him. And the doctor drew around the rash with a Sharpie to see if it was going to get any bigger on the same day Donald Trump drew on Alabama. So we were just noting that. That's yeah. upsetting. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, right down on the panhandle. Yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> good, good luck. Patience. Yeah, patience, yeah. And soap. Soap. Soap? You think soap is good? I, my, my mom always uh, prescribes soap for a rash. Is that right? Yeah. Because I think soap oftentimes gives you a rash. Uh, it depends on the soap. I guess it does depend on the soap, yeah. In our family, it was Vicks VapoRub was prescribed for everything. Sure. It didn't matter what you have. You could have, like, uh, lung cancer and be like, yeah, just rub a little Vicks on it. It'll go away. Just a thin patina of Vicks on a BLT also <laughs> makes it... <laughs> Keeps everything moving. <laughs> Do you toast the bread first, or how does it... Yeah, not. okay. <laughs> You've got this... Uh, you're getting ready to go out on... How many comedy tour tours have you done now? This will be my third official tour. I had American Ham and Full Bush, and I, I did one... Uh, I did, did one with my wife called Summer of 69, no apostrophe. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh... <laughs> right. <laughs> But this, so this is my, my... <laughs> <laughs> you always gotta, you gotta give it a minute for the arithmetic. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this, so, this is my third. This is the third one. And you've been like, did you start as an actor or did you start as a comedian? I started as a theater actor in Chicago mm -hmm. and things went well enough that I got to move to LA and I got work in TV and film, still continuing to do theater. And during Parks and Recreation, colleges mistakenly began to invite me to perform my stand-up. Right. And, and I was ignorant enough that I thought, like, Rodney Dangerfield. I was like, I'm not a stand-up. I'm, I'm a theater actor. I perform works of literature. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, like, the third time, I was like, well, wait a second. How many kids? You know, and they said, 2,000 kids you're talking to. And I said, there's some things I would like to say to 2,000 kids. <laughs> And, and it paid well. Uh -huh. Please tell them that, uh, that I get no respect over at Ohio State. Uh -huh. Yeah. I will come perform my stand-up. And so I started writing. I, and I play stupid songs on the guitar uh -huh. that people seem to really enjoy. And I just, I love it. You know, as a theater guy, you rehearse a play for a month or six weeks. You build a set. You glue on, you know, wigs and facial hair. As a stand-up, you just show up with a backpack and a guitar, and they call it a show. And you're ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. And so, okay, so you're doing this. I love the idea, by the way, that you had felt like you had things you wanted to say to the 2,000 kids. Yeah. And they were paying to hear them, so presumably they're listening to you. And now you've parlayed that. What will people see on this particular tour? Is it... Well, the, uh, you know, I don't know if you've seen the news recently, but... Uh, I have been following, yeah. Things, things are kind of dire. There's a, there's a lot of, like, bipartisan ire, not yes. only in our country, but around the world. People are, sh people are shaking their fists at each other. And it, if you take a little step back from that, it, make, it cracks me up, because we're all <laughs> the same big group of people, especially in this country where we get to vote. And so we're kind of doing it to ourselves. Like, if you don't like it, well, we, the systems are in place where we could change it. Um, and so the show is kind of making fun of all of us. Uh-huh. Uh, the things about human beings, you know, we're incredible. We create technology. We, uh, we have made drinkable yogurt. I mean, the... <laughs> yeah. Our advancements are astonishing, but <laughs> at, at the same time, <laughs> we're very good at, like, causing each other pain. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> often trying to make money at causing each other pain. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, you know... Uh, it, it's uh, trying to find a compromise between those things. And so I'm, I'm poking fun at the sides of humanity and myself that I think we can all improve. And you just got back from doing this 
in other countries. Mm -hmm. And what countries were you in? I, I toured Australia, New Zealand, Scotland, England, and Ireland. And do they understand all, when you speak about these things going on in America, does it resonate with them? Well, they do. Unfortunately, in England, the timing was such that I was able to say at the top of the show, I'm, I'm sorry for your recent political developments. Now you have one of your own. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and people people would cry, scream and cry loudly. They would keen. Uh, oh. <laughs> so you brought joke. anguish to the world, <laughs> yeah. is what you did, yeah. And would you go, like, since it's a one-man show, do you have, like, roadies? Do you have a truck that pulls up? I, I, I work with an entourage, a posse of, there's five of us. There's me, my guitar, my backpack, righty and lefty. Oh, is that it? Yeah. <laughs> So is it long? Do you have like friends there that you go and visit and stay with? I do. I have friends, you know, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> through because of social media and the, and I'm a woodworker. Uh, I, yeah. And, and I'm a fan of agriculture. Um, well, who isn't? Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> all around the world, I have friends in these communities. Um, and in, in England, I met, there's a shepherd and his family that I met over Twitter. A real shepherd. This guy, his name's James Rebanks. He has this amazing book called The Shepherd's Life, and that's where I found him. <laughs> and we ended up, you know, we were like, hey, I, I love stacking stone walls too. <laughs> we should be friends. And uh, I ended up going and staying with his family and like, uh, they're, they remind me of my family when I was a kid. It's a farming family where you just know what to do. You get up and do the dishes, they have dinner around the table every night, and I just really admire them. So for, it's like my Disneyland, except I go help uh, a farmer, like, feed his sheep. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds a lot different than Disneyland, though. <laughs> it's much less expensive. Uh -huh. <laughs> you get to do a lot more dishes. Uh huh. It's, you do it's, help with the chores? It's way better, yeah. I do mean, you tend the sheep? Do you herd sheep? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm his helper, so I run around and do what he tells me. Uh -huh. but, but, you know, uh, in the winter, every day, the, there's no grass, so we would take bales of hay and spread them around for the sheep to eat. They also eat a product called sheep cake, and I was in charge sometimes of spreading the sheep cake. Wow. Yeah. He, it would be the worst travel agent maybe ever. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> it's, it's the greatest. Oh, I, it is it, I really? come from an agricultural family, and I live in Los Angeles, so... Uh -huh. For me, it's so dreamy to get out in the weather uh -huh. and handle some animals. You can't be like everyone else here and just grow weed? No, no, no. <laughs> no, I try. <laughs> We're gonna take a break. Nick Offerman is here. His All Rise Tour kicks off September 11th. We'll be right back. Uh, those are the many faces of Nick Offerman, <laughs> as rendered by Dr. Frankenstein. You'd seen that, I assume, huh? Yeah, uh, a couple people sent it to me. Yeah, right. I was... <laughs> <laughs> That's weird, but in a way, it's a kind of a good thing to have, because if you ever do anything wrong and it gets caught on videotape, you could just blame that guy. Yeah, that was a deep fake. That <laughs> yeah, was a deep fake. I did not steal those candy bars. <laughs> How is your wife, Megan Mullally? How is she doing? She is great. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, you know, I uh, can't believe she's put up with me for almost 20 years now. 20 years. That's very... Yeah. That's a long time. And I mean, you know, you've seen her. She, she's a legend. She's gorgeous. She's, she's my teacher. Funny, talented. Yeah, I, I'm the luckiest guy that has come down the pike. And uh, I, I keep do, doing my best to, uh, to not upset her. Uh, That's good. <laughs> That's I, wise. I, I brought an array of ties to the dressing room. Oh. And I sent her photographs. And she chose this she time. She chose the plaid. That's how you stay married. Interesting. Ladies and gentlemen. Wow. I didn't know it was that simple. Yeah. Now, I do want to ask you a follow-up question for something she spoke about when she was here the last time. She said something, and forgive me if I have this wrong, but something to the effect of, after you make love, which your husband and wife, it's perfectly yeah. fine. all three times. Yeah. After you make love, <laughs> you told her that she looks like Cher. Well... <laughs> 
There, yes, that is, uh, that is generally true. Uh-huh. It's happened more than once? It ha well, yeah, you know, uh, th like I said, three times. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> so afterwards, you'll go like, oh, that was great, you look like Cher? No, no. The, uh, the lighting, you know, it's sort of a twilight scene in uh -huh. the afterglow of, of uh, robust fornication. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I, I may be in a little bit of a hallucinatory state. <laughs> And she, and she has her hair down uh, in a way uh, 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 that resembles the, the ephemeral beauty of Cher sort of in the 70s. So like a Cher, you know. I see, the Cher maybe with a headband yeah, Cher. Yeah, like a period sort of uh, Playboy centerfold. Mm -hmm. it's, when she was going through her Native American. Yeah. Yes. It's, I mean, it's, me it's meant as a highly erotic compliment. Yes, oh. <laughs> No doubt, no doubt. It's shorthand for, honey, this is really working for me. <laughs> have, you, <laughs> have you had a, had the opportunity or the inclination to mention this to Cher herself? I have not. You have I, not. Yeah. No, I, um, I'm, no, I've, I've not even been in a bedroom with Cher. You've not? <laughs> well, that's weird. It is. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's early. You really are a Hollywood outsider. <laughs> There's still time. You have your own brand of scotch. Is it your own brand or is it your own special varietal? Let me try and nutshell this for yeah, you. Yeah, nutshell it for me. Uh, yeah. On Parks and Recreation, Ron Swanson, my mm -hmm. character, his scotch was this uh, delicious, smoky, peaty scotch called Lagavulin. Mm -hmm. And it happened to be my favorite going in, which is crazy. It's also oh, that was a coincidence. And also, it was the favorite of Mike Schur, the creator of the show. Uh -huh. And we used it so much that we developed a relationship with the Scotch company. Uh -huh. We ended up shooting a scene where my character goes there to their distillery mm -hmm. on this cute little island in Scotland. And we hit it off so well that they hired me to start doing funny commercials for them. I see. Four, five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. we, we've continually done it to the point where now they're putting out the Offerman edition of this Lagavulin scotch. <laughs> and what makes it Offerman-esque? Is it, I just, I just went to theater school, uh -huh. and now I got my own whiskey. <laughs> so act, acting is the way to go. Yeah, it is the way to go. Because Mike got cut out of this deal, right? Oh, yeah. He's gone, right? There's no sure edition no, of Scott. There's yeah. no good place uh, beverages coming down. No! <laughs> oh, or maybe. Who or knows? Maybe, yeah. Well, it's great to see you. If you want to go see Nick on tour, he may be coming directly to your home. Uh, the tour starts September 11th at the Fox Cities Performing Arts Center in Appleton, Wisconsin. Nick Offerman, everybody. Thank you, Nick. If you like that video, click subscribe, and we'll be together until one of us dies.